No, no, no. Respiration and breathing are not the same thing. As a matter of fact, most organisms don't even have lungs. Respiration requires carbohydrates to react with oxygen and release energy. Cellular respiration is a lot like when you light a fire. The fuel reacts with oxygen and gives off energy in the form of light and heat. It also gives off waste products such as carbon dioxide. Of course, we can't just have a crack -a and fire down in your cells. So instead, living organisms take carbohydrates, they oxidize them, and use the energy to make ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So first of all, an organism eats food and, and the digestive system converts most of the carbohydrates to a sugar, usually glucose. Now glucose has six atoms of carbon, as you can see here. That means we use the subscript C6. And it's combined, it's a carbohydrate, so it's combined with hydrogen. So you have C6H12, and there's also oxygen in it. So the whole glucose molecule looks like C6H12O6. Now when it gets inside your system, you then oxidize it through respiration, as we talked about. So you're adding six molecules of free oxygen, that's six O2. And here's the whole formula. It goes through many processes inside the cell, but basically you start with glucose, you add oxygen, it reacts with the oxygen and gives you six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and of course, free energy, in our case, in organisms, that energy is used to convert ADP, adenosine diphosphate, to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is, the, is life's energy currency. It's used in the most important life processes. It's a very critical molecule. And it gets used up, it turns back into ADP, and then you need more energy to make it back into ATP. Another thing, if you count all the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms on both sides of this equation, on each side of the arrow, you'll find they balance out. There's no oxygen or carbon, no elements that are used up and no elements that are added. This is called stoichiometry. It's always going to equal things. So if you count these all up, you get that. So there you have it. Now you've got all this great energy you can use to carry out all kinds of activities in your life. Then all you have to do is exhale the carbon dioxide and eliminate the H2O. Nothing is for free. You probably noticed that in order to release all this energy when we oxidize carbohydrates, that means that energy had to get used up in order to produce the carbohydrates in the first place. So where did the energy come from to make these carbohydrates? The answer is that ultimately all life on Earth gets its power from the sun. Sunlight, through the process of photosynthesis, does essentially the reverse of what respiration does. So you start with energy from the sun, you combine it with water and CO2, carbon dioxide, and this whole process gets reversed, and so you end up creating, car creating carbohydrates, in this case glucose, and releasing some oxygen in the process. So essentially, photosynthesis and respiration are mirror images of each other. Respiration, from a chemical perspective, creates products that are used in photosynthesis, which in turn creates the products that are used in respiration. Each one is a complement to the other. And as in all things in nature, there's a balance. So just to sum up everything we've been talking about, make sure you understand that all living organisms do this. They use carbohydrates in order to release energy for ATP. Virtually all of them get their energy to make the carbohydrates from the sun, although there are some exceptions. Be sure you know the chemical process, and make sure you know that photosynthesis is the reverse of this whole procedure. I gotta go now, my dogs are barking, they're hungry, but be sure to go to sciencetutoronline.com to get more details on this, or to download your study guides and notes. Thanks for watching.